According, I say assume. Because this person may have a decent partner that is not even a Christian. He does not make you look a righteous person. While individuals who live, who lives a careful life end up suffering in marriage, I also question the question, I also question careful life. What do you mean by careful life? But I understand the heart of the person who is asking this question. Like, like, I say like. Ni me bi che, ban yi duni aba, na bi yesu, na zuwa church, na kome. Ama se emata wanda suwa angwa suna en iska, suna chin chungwam, suna yao, suna kwana da maza. Se yi ga suna yo, ban che chin chungwam, kongwa su fara chi, we ma chin chungwam, ya zuzu libi. I am only describing, because the book, book of Proverbs also describes a prostitute-like woman. Say she's the one that stands in Proverbs chapter 5. He says she stands at the city gate, beckon on young men. She's lousy. She's everything. You know, Bible describes all of these things. You don't read scripture, that's your problem. And that's why I'm questioning these so many things here. If not, we'll give you an answer here. You will say, I atarun diwai sinangi amana. So I'm rephrasing your question for the sake of understanding. Assuming I know your heart, and then it's just language you are using. It's very good English, but for us as believers, we don't joke with words like this. Because this is not what takes you to heaven. Decent press partner, careful life. What is, you can be very religious and you're not spiritual. So I'm, that's why I'm, I'm poking this question very well. And then you'll be blaming God. You're very religious. You come to church. You're in the church band. So that we'll not be confusing those who sooner you on Ruhania, the one that's sooner religion. So that because you are religious, you go to church, you do everything. Kina osha, kina kome. Seki asa achieva na yazwe kai kana kome a church. Kana sugabang kuingi ya kana kome. Amaga kana mbaka da aure hara zung. Seka tambe mu umengi ju mu gune. No, ya sanzu chemu. So, but I want to ask and say, look, these are the kind of argument we see people bringing, and they say the bad girls are ending up getting married, and the good girls are still at home. That's what this person is trying to say. God has a plan for your life. Being at home at 38 does not mean that God will not give you a husband. If a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 All things are passed away. God has a plan for your life. Let me just say to you, if you are feeling that bad girls and bad boys are just getting married. The Bible says, do not envy what? The prosperity of the wicked. So don't envy them. You say they are bad girls, they are getting married. Do they tell you what they are going through inside marriage? Do they tell you the pain they are going through inside marriage? Does it mean coming to marry means that you understand the biblical concept of marriage? Babu. So I want to encourage you and advise you. Do not be moved by these things. Hold on to the truth you believe. Hold on to the faith. Murike Bankaskian and Amuseni. Our God is not a man that he should lie. He is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Young lady or young man who asks this question, if you are diligently seeking God, hold on to it. God will reward you. Do not envy. Because when you keep envying, Satan will use that to make you feel terrible. But I want to encourage you, delay. Delay is not easy. Sorry, I mean waiting is not easy. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. God has a plan for your life. His time will come. Maybe when Ruth entered Boaz's farm, people laughed at her. But in God's time, she located Boaz and God lifted her. I pray the Lord will help you to understand that. Amen. Next question quickly. We have shorter time. My friend asked me to marry him. He is, now this question I saw, it. I don't want to also dwell on this. And my parents are not so fine about, because of his denomination. Please, what can I do? Listen to me. It's hard what I will tell you. Never get into marriage, marrying anybody without the blessings of your parents. Never get married without the blessings of the church. And I want to tell you, relationship your pastors don't know, your parents don't know, you are in trouble. It's a bad foundation. Never get married without the blessings of your parents. If it means waiting, please, I'm saying what? 
wait. And you're not just waiting angrily. Not waiting with guna guni. Wait what? Patiently. If it's the love of 1 Corinthians 13, if it's the heart of Galatians chapter 2 where we read to do, those fruit of the spirit, our God is the God of all flesh, including any denomination you put there. Expect your parents to have fear because of doctrinal teachings. The question I will ask you, are you sure and convinced and have a conviction that this is God's will? If you are, nothing will stop it. The Lord will honor it and the Lord will do it for his glory. But if it's your selfish reasons, please sit back and think again. God is the God of all flesh. And I want to ask, maybe if your parents if it is an unbeliever that comes from the U.S., a white man, and is a Buddhist, will your parents say you shouldn't marry him? For the fact that Baturi and take out dollars, that's true. I ubengi jitani, Allah ne mehalita, mama nije. The reason is that Baturi has what? That's why I used to ask sometimes. One of these are young girls marrying all these Baturi. Some of them are not believers. But your parents will have it. Yeah, tata, I will be to it. Ay, ay, ay. Yes, we will go there. No? So it's the same thing for me. Does this person understand biblical principles? Listen to me. Among these kind of people, there are people who love God genuinely also. That's why you must be able to test all spirits. Be able to test and understand that it is God. If it is God that is sending you there, he will keep you. He sent... Daniel and all his friends to where he was sending them. He kept them. God will help you. Next question. Is there anything like separation in the Bible apart from divorce? In the issue of domestic violence, what is your take on that? It's the same question linking to the first one. Listen carefully. There are words that you people are bringing now. In your relationship, somebody just says separate. We could have relationship. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Coming, we have a room. Let's take a break. You see, marriage, listen to me. Marriage is about sitting down and talking as mature people. You know, there are people who cannot look at their wives in love and tell them that Abunde King by the Deva. With love, with love, with love. See, we will hurt each other, but we can make each other. We can help ourselves. You see, you start learning some things in your single life, and you take them into marriage, and you'll be asking questions. What is making you to separate? If you want to cut down a tree, go to the root. What is, you want me to tell you that, yes, separate? No, I must, what is making you to separate? Let's handle that issue. And if that issue is solved, like the example you gave, sir, during the wedding in Bishara, when I've not forgotten it. Was there any separation again? A mother just told her daughter, He was the one that preached I was in Bishara one at Oran Aurewani. Just some months back. It sticked in my brain. Don't 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 changing up. And at the end of the day, as according to the story, I'm paraphrasing. She now came back to the mother and said, Mama guess kept on so much to my changer. Yeah, change. To my mom that to Nari Ganaba Kimaga and kiss as they mutu by what I would die. Mama was able to And then the mother said, Go and come back. He said, Abundagna Sabaki, Kisamishi, Bama Gribe, and Tumeric Nekoi. (laughs) 
May God give you his turmeric. <laughs> when we sit down patiently, we will not be asking this question of separation. God hates it. It must not be heard among believers. You are not willing to be matured enough to look at each other straight in the eyes and say, I am wrong. African men can have getting it too hard. Not all. But there are things that say, Jugunu, Sanu. Kazama King Kong. I have a man and Dukan King Kong. I have a man and Dukan actor. I have a man to a man and Dukan actor. Wives, don't say one nam banza. One nam banza. Hey, hey, hey. It's a man and sorry. Fear. Say sorry. All these separation issues will not come in our head. That's why we are asking questions like this. God's will for you is not even to separate, not even to divorce. The last part of the question says what? That question. It says, in this issue of domestic violence, what is your take on that? My take on that is that it can be possible, it can be solved. But the method you may be using is not God's method. One person can become very rude and stubborn and refuse to allow Lord God to move. But if two of you can come to your knees, violence will stop. And yes, the stand is that if the life of the woman is in jeopardy, what do you do with that woman? But I want to tell you, there's a lot of advocacy is going by some who believe they can defend you. And they are also pushing so that you will leave. So that you pay them their fee for pushing you out. They have made their money and they have left you. When you stay six months, you desire that you know you wish you can make it well. But I want to say to you, any violence that can get to a point of crushing, the church is not saying, or for me, I'm not saying it's divorce. Can we protect the life of person while we are handling the issue? But if you keep the person not to be, not, not to have the effect of violence, and you are not grooming the person to reconcile the two people, then you are gradually consenting to divorce but wyorically. Because if we say go, Kipita is too dangerous, the man is violent. What is our need of telling the person to move? If our motive is actually to save from a harm done, then while the people are there, we must also make frantic, deliberate, intentional effort to make sure to see these people come back together. But the word of separation today, many separations have ended up in divorce. Because nobody cared to say, okay, it's for a while. Let's calm this person down and bring him back to his senses. And every man that comes back to his senses will go back like the prodigal son to say, Father, I have sinned against you. I'm not worthy enough to be your son. So my stake is that how long will you keep people separated? If the intent is that to make them work well, then we must be deliberate about working on them so that they will come back together. And let the Lord do his work. But we must do our work here. And be deliberate in reconciling people back. Amen. Next one quickly. Is it appropriate for couples to keep some secrets from each other? No. How can you influence a partner that has lost hope in God? Aside from praying, humble yourself, accept your problem, walk boldly the way you toasted the woman in the first place, walk to her with the same strength and the way you toasted her, and tell her that I'm sorry, I love you, I want you to come back home. That's all. Go with the next one. Is it possible for me to fall in love while I already have a girlfriend? No! Which of, the, which of the above girlfriends should I go for? Note, I love both of them. You cannot! Hello? Okay. Hello, hello, time is going. Time, time, time. Hello! All right, cool down. Take that question back again, sir. Now, you see, that you, you, you need more. You need, I'm praying 
I was in Genta Mongrel for relationship weekend. And uh, CEO, the Christian Education of the LCC was there. Pastor Adikaba. And I told him, Adikaba, can you hear what they're asking? We need to help our young people in our LCCs and in our LCBs. We must be deliberate. There are terms. Look at this. Girlfriend. What do you mean by girlfriend? What do you mean by love? I, oh, I've studied here. You, you, no matter the fine girls in your life, you will end up with one. Start grooming yourself to become narrower, narrower, narrower. You are getting older, you are getting more girls. Brother, you can't love the both of them. You better make up your mind. You are just living outside the context of scripture. God will help you. Next one. In a relationship where both agree, nothing will happen, especially sex. Then afterwards, the man now tells the girl that he cannot date a girl without having sex with her. And that girl loves the man and doesn't want to leave that man. What do you advise me to do? Leave the man! Thank God. As a married woman, that her husband changes to be a womanizer. One day I regret she got after divorce, now But I pray God will help you. I pray God will help you. After marriage, but is still supporting her financially. Should she leave the marriage or continue in the marriage? I've answered this question. I've answered it though. Let's move again. But this man needs help. And I want to tell the man, Kari Gaka Kama Hanya. Togo Mashu Mubangi is a Burkanka very soon. Now listen to me. If you are a womanizer and an adulterous man, listen to me. You are only enjoying for a time. Konduba Ayan de Mukaran Tako. Proverbs chapter 11, verse what? 29. Any man who troubles his home. Will inherit what? Trouble or the wind. I am here to kill it. Already this man is troubling his wife. Miss Alaysura Gomesha, there I am is in the Tara. Yet you do mutum in the AK Sai Alisa, Achiki Damwa, Zay Venere, Zay Gadun Damwa. You see a lot of our Christian people walking. Yatama one number Alberka, Yatama one number Alberka. Sir, are you troubling your wife and your children? And this womanizer is already troubling his family. When you start falling down, you fall like a sack of dusa. Don't you hear what the Bible says in Proverbs? That he who goes to our way is like a sheep that is being led to what? To the slaughter. That you will end up like a loaf of bread. If you are here and you are like that, please don't end up like a loaf of bread. God has a future for you. Go back to your wife and take care of your children. And let the Sekatun Sama al Maka. Five minutes pleasure can ruin your life. Don't cause pain to your wife and your children. When you are 80 years, what you do to their mother, that is how they will take care of you. There are men who their children are rich today, but they left their father. And all of those Jezebels and Delilahs, they have left him. Sir, please, don't end up at 60 and 70 years with sorrow. Because they are the most difficult time in age. When you look for who to give you food and there's nobody. But you have hurt your wife, hurt your children. They grew up knowing you are a womanizer. The pain is in them. Remember, hurting people hurt others. Your children may be hurt. They are quiet. They see, they hear. Remember, someone somewhere is watching you. It is not good that man should be alone. How then do I tally this with 1 Corinthians chapter 7, which says, For I wish all men, even as myself, remain what? Now, this is Paul speaking. It's Paul speaking. Paul said, Because 
is speaking in reference. You know, the book of Corinthians is a very interesting book. And in, in our theological seminary in Jets now, there's a course in MA. It's called Current Correspondence. That course is just to study this church in Corinth. It's the book of Corinthians, first and second. Excellent course. And there are a lot of Mahawara, Iri, Iri, Awajan. Now, Paul was speaking to a church to tell them, he has seen the immoral life that is going on in the church of Corinth. Sexual immorality was one of the things that was in that church. Powerful, gifted church. They speak in tongues. They prophesy. They do everything. But this thing, when sexual immorality, said, So he's saying, I wish that that was on a kamani. But you know, the person that asks the question, go and read the text. Don't just take a verse out of context. Read the whole of the context. But Paul still answered. Once there is Amar, there is Amar from the verse you take. He said, but because of Zamani, the Kuma fornication and adultery, Paul went back to the beginning again. Let everyone have what? So go and read the passage. He still went back again. Thank you. You know. Does God call people to be celibate in order to serve him? No. No. In order... God has given us every opportunity to serve him. Whether you are in celibacy or not, you are supposed to serve God. So celibacy is not the only justification to serve God. If If some people have chosen that before you serve, you must be a celibate, that is what they chose. But there is no way in the Bible they say it cannot. Peter had his wife, and his Bible told us that he has a mother-in-law. Well, I understand. But if you think you have the gift of celibacy, Obengeji Temakeka. Yarikeka. Bulus Yaga Ira Abu Yeche quick quick at chapter seven yeche. Ama domi. Kay kwame karbaza kuya aikim ba iri na kweba. So is there. Is multi is multiple failed relationship a sign that God is calling you to celebrate? No, sir. You may have had character issues in your relationships. And I want to tell this person, work on yourself. Work on yourself. You need to work. Don't use celibacy to cover up for your failures in relationship. Let every relationship that has passed teach you a lesson for something you have done wrong that is not right. Right your wrongs. Write them. If God gives you the gift of celibacy, the grace is sufficient for you. But if you are failing in relationship and you want to use celibacy to cover up for your failure, no, sir. God cannot do that. If you use this, and when your pains and those character issues are dealt with, you will desire for your wife. And it's going to be hard for you at that time. Work on your lapses. Work on your negatives. Go back to your core, spirituality. Next one. Does God call so Well, is heartbreak real? Well, I have not gone through one. If you have gone through one, ask me. I don't know. Is it real? Is it real? Okay, keep quiet. Keep quiet. How can your heart be broken and you are still sitting here? Your heart is intact. Oh. Somebody just disappointed you. Please don't give your heart for anybody to break it. The day your heart is really broken, you will die. Well, it's a language called heartbreak. Heartbreak, is it true that God does not choose a life partner for a person? I don't know if someone told you it is true or not true. But all I know, you have your own work to what? To do here. Because even God can even show you, you can know that this is the right person, but you make your choice. What God, how God created man, he gave us the will. And God gave us the ability to be able to choose. Right from the Garden of Eden. What are you doing with this free gift of will and choice that God has given you? Munach And you must be able to, to use all the reasoning that God has given you as a complete being to make a choice. You have the responsibility. But your responsibility to make a choice is enshrined and embedded in your depth of relationship with God. Everything we are saying here, go back to God. John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. I am the, I am the vine, you are the vine, I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do what? Friends, take that verse serious. You can't do anything. Go back to God, young people. What do I do in relationship leading to marriage where the man was married 
and is separated with his wife and his son without a tangible reason. And after praying for God's will and not... I don't understand. Somebody should read for me. This is the second to the last one. After this, I take the last question. Can you help me read? Stand up now. Read. Let me hear. Come close. What do I do in a relationship leading to marriage? Now, where the man was... Is was ko? So, yeah, I read that ko? Masan tamutu ne? Toba magana. What are you doing with a married man? Is somebody's husband? Oh, the man is separated? By what factor and what yardstick? What do you do as a man when you love a lady and eventually propose to her and her response is that she has not finished it? Hallelujah. All right. I was told that it's just to let me just finish, okay? Is there a certain age a man should befriend a lady? Do I have to befriend numerous ladies to get the right lady? Again? Again? Is it normal for a lady of 25 years never to have be in a relationship or even have a toaster? If no, what is the way out? Is it normal? Okay, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Time now. Time. Amen. Hello. Tommy Shurubara. Kukunche is not normal, right? But do we have people like that? So what makes it abnormal? If she makes up her mind, now, one question I will just say there is that I like the word a toaster. She may... Now, you may miss toasting and proposals. This person also is asking questions with English, scattered. But I'm sure if you sit with this person to elaborate more, we'll tell you more. Because it depends on what she's calling toaster or is it possible. But I tell you, even from primary school, some boys have started writing letters. Even the person that is selling meat in Kaswaiva at AK, how far? How far? How far? That one is toasting now. Somebody even just look at you. You know that he's toasting you. So, sister, I'm sure somebody has toasted you. But to you, in your own personality, it's not called toasting. You may be confusing proposing for marriage and toasting. There's nothing abnormal about you. You are still a human being. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. When they start coming, you will ask God to drive them away. So we pray for you. There's nothing abnormal about your life. So long as you are pleasing God, and so long as maybe the person set principles, and you can set principles that have driven them away. But I tell you, you are not abnormal. So don't start going for one prayer. The time will come, and you'll be shocked to see that she may even get married before some people who have multiple toasters. God can do his thing. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. One more again. At what point are you to let your partner know of any health issue you have or had? What do you do when you find out your partner has a severe health condition? He or she knew after marriage. Now that is what I didn't touch actually. Road to marriage. From relationship to friendship to courtship. At courtship point. That is why we say better a broken courtship than a broken marriage. You know, what you people are doing now is dating and marrying. 
You don't follow the process. You just date and end up in marrying. At courtship, you have nothing to hide. That is the point where you tell each other the truth. Because parents are involved, church is involved. You can tell I was once an arm robber before, but God saved me. The issue there is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If a person is in Christ, is a new creation, all things are what? Many marriages are suffering today because of issues like this. You never told the person the truth until Anshigaure. And then all of a sudden you say, Kachu Cheni. Please, in your courtship, that is why you don't rush into marriage. Have time to be friends, have time to court, and have time to tell yourself the truth. Remember John 8.32, I end up with it. You shall know the truth. <laughs>